Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and this week I'm tackling a Purple Passion Hot Wheels Custom. Uh, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while, and I figured I'd tackle it this week, um, kind of as a break in between some big projects. And as always, if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of all future videos. So, yeah, I have a Hot Wheels Purple Passion. Um, it's purple, and um, it's got that stupid thing on the back. It's like a step, so I'm really not sure what its purpose is. Um, this car had a, it kind of had a different outlook, uh, or, you know, I had an idea what I wanted to do, and I ended up changing it two or three times, but I wanted to put those full moon rims on it, and, um, Ultimately, what I was kind of looking to do was do some sort of a Cobra replica from the movie, uh, but I didn't go that route. So once I take it apart, the uh, it's got nice tinted glass and this god-awful fluorescent baby piss yellow interior that holds the wheels in. There's no real tabs. It's just grooves. The uh, interior itself has the, the actual tabs that hold it down and wedge it to the base. Uh, just a horrible, I wouldn't say horrible design, but man, that interior is just god-awful. So, um, you know, it's the whole point of what I was trying to do at this point is kind of get a feel for what these wheels are going to do, how they're going to fit, what they're going to look like. I always mock things up, and then I end up changing stuff halfway through. So the front wheels, because they're so wide... Um, same thing on the back, just these are stock wheels that I got um, off of something else if you watch a couple of videos ago. Um, I have to cut the axles in half, so in order to do that, I also need to do axle tubes. So once I cut the axle tube for the front, I grind it down, make it smooth. The one thing I found on the front is the wheels fit, but they stuck out too much, and it looked really stupid. So what I end up doing, and I don't show it on camera, um, I end up grinding the little... I don't know, I call it a little tab or a little tip that sticks out at the back of the wheels. Um, I ground that off so that the wheels were sitting flush, and that gave me the right spacing that I was looking for so the front wheels would tuck in under those front fenders. And it's got big big fenders, so um, and they were still a little wide. However, with axle tubes, you have to widen whatever channel. In this case, um, it was both the bottom where it would sit in the groove on the two tabs, and also on the interior to compensate for the larger diameter. Um, but 90% of, you know, if you watch any of my videos, 90% of what I do is all fit. Um, a lot of mock-up, a lot of trial and error. You can see right there it was kind of sticking out a little bit. Um, I use a file as well to kind of help groove out the bottom because if you go too far with the plastic with the cutoff wheel, you're going to end up cutting the chassis in half. The back wheels I had to kind of narrow up a little bit, but they did fit not a problem in the back um, with the fender skirts. The body was in rough shape as usual. When you get rid of the paint, there's a ton of casting lines. Now these Mercs, um, they're, they're really an iconic car. And I spent a lot of time um, both working on old cars and just going to car shows. And I, just, I love the history of it. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to hang out with a few um, legends, George Barris, Ed Roth, Gene Winfield, um, have dinner with them and stuff like that just due to some car shows locally that um, we helped, me and my dad helped put on one of the largest shows in New England. We used to fly these guys in and then we'd take them out to dinner and wine and dine them and all that kind of happy horse shit. So um, the stories were unreal. But the, the Mercuries are, are what's called a lead sled. And the great part about these things is the history behind them. So here's a picture of me um, at the shop when we had the speed shop with George Barris and my buddy Tim and my dad, and that obviously is me. So here's a little bit about letting. This is um, Bill Hines, and he is the the lead slinger. He is the king of, or was the king of of letting. Um, shows you got to, you know, back before Bondo, you didn't have a choice. You used lead uh, to fill in your gaps after you welded stuff in. So 
the process is quite late, laborious. I guess that's so how you say it, laborious. The you got to tin it, you got to add some lead, then you got to wipe it off. Once you've wiped it off, you've got to then lead and put as much lead down as you possibly can. And this is like an art form, um, getting the right heat. So you're not warping the steel. Anybody's ever worked with sheet metal on, on anything, it doesn't take much to warp the steel, especially in a, near a weld where you've already added heat in the first place. So you, you get the lead rods and then you gotta you heat it with your torch and you kind of push it in and twist the rod. And then after all that's done, you use this block and that smooths it out. That's how chop tops, French headlights, um, shaved door handles all that stuff was all done with lead hence the lead sled so i wanted this to be as i guess the word is iconic i liked the old school look um i didn't i decided not to go the cobra route because there was a lot of body mods on the cobra if you watch the movie again there's a lot of stuff on it that just this casting wasn't it would just would have taken too much so I just kind of went my own route and wanted this to kind of be a tribute to just old school marks. Um, so after I stripped the paint and sanded the marks down, um, I cut it with some steel wool and then I want to get rid of that back piece. So I'm going to use my Dremel tool to cut that off because it just it serves no purpose unless people plan on standing on it while you're driving around. Um, it's just a, something that Hot Wheels did and I've never liked it. So I'm going to cut it off, just two thin cuts. I didn't go too close to the fenders themselves because I'm going to end up grinding it down after I've cut it. And I'd rather cut a little further away and then grind down and then file the end than cut too close. So you'll notice now I have a wider, thicker disc on my Dremel tool, and that is specifically for grinding. And I'll get a little bit closer, and I'll finish it off with a file. something you have to be careful when you're going I should probably have it in a vise um, I've got one I've never shown it I think I showed it once um, I don't use it very often um, I just like the control of using my hands and if I screw up I screw up so once all that's done um, it's ready for primer I'm gonna put a thick coat of gray primer on the body I masked off the front grill and I'm gonna paint the chrome base black and I'm going to primer the white uh, the interior white um, the gray primer is just a Krylon 2x or Rust-Oleum 2x primer um, I do have Stino Res and all that other stuff but I wanted something a little bit thicker to fill in any minor imperfections and then I'm going to use the Createx Wicked Black on on everything on the body and when you put that on it comes off with a nice satin black finish which is exactly what I wanted so I'm going to paint and do some detail work. Um, obviously it's a Mercury, so it's got a Ford power plant. So I'm going to paint the oil pan blue and then do the exhaust and do all the details that I've been trying to do a little bit more of lately, exhausts, so on and so forth. You'll notice I've been using a Sharpie a little bit more and more. This is a silver Sharpie, and it adds a little bit of contrast, so I'm doing just about everything on the exhaust except for the actual side pipes themselves, which are real thin. They're like lake pipes, so um, I wanted those to be chrome, but naturally you wouldn't chrome your entire exhaust, so um, I just do up to a certain point, and then I'll use my, my chrome pen to, uh, right here you'll see it, just to get the actual side pipes themselves so it stands out a little bit and I just kind of blend it in. Yeah, these these are, I like these old school custom builds. I think they're my favorite out of all the builds that I do. I love muscle cars, I love trucks, I love the gasoline and stuff, but anything that's kind of, I, I guess, close to or uh, reminiscent of anything that would be custom just stuff that would have been done in the 50s and 60s. I mean, I spent my entire childhood going to car shows. I mean, I blew off my prom to go to Lead East, which was a huge show in New Jersey every year at the Meadowlands back when that was open. 
Um, actually, I, I blew off my wife to go. Um, my wife was my girlfriend in high school. So naturally, that uh, gets thrown in my face every year. But anyways, um, I get the interior. I did it. I went with the classic black and white. And then I'm doing a silver. Um, it's got a console that runs pretty much all the way from the dashboard to the back seat, which would have been like a stainless. So I'm doing that in a, in a, in a silver. Um, then it's just a matter of starting to assemble. The, if you'll notice, I did use the black wash in between the grill, which is supposed to be, a lot of times in the 50s, you take like the teeth from a Corvette grill, from an early Corvette grill, and, and set that in, the Mercs, 53 Chevy, stuff like that. It looks like teeth, and it really comes out awesome. So that's what they did with, at least Hot Wheels got that part right. really looks good. Um, but yeah, now it's just a matter of assembly. Um, like I said, I didn't go crazy. I actually used restraint this time. And I just wanted a classic satin black look. I nailed it as far as I'm concerned. I love the way it came out. It's plain. It's understated. And it's exactly what I want. It may not be great for video. Uh, it's not flashy in any way, shape, or form. But it's definitely effective. As always, shout out to my Patreon members. Chris Smith, Joey Williams, Kristen Staneland, Stephen Mance, William Robinson. Devil's Details Diecast, Matchbox Garage. Alvarez's Diecast Customs. Jim Silver and one-time pledges like Chris Stanifer. The ones with the YouTubes next to them are the icons. Check them out in the links down below. So, as a reminder, what I started with. Purple, ugly wheels, piss yellow interior, and a silly looking step on the back for, I don't know what, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but that's what I started with. And the end result, in my opinion, a classic black 50s Merc, 49 or 50 Merc. Um, I just, I was going to put flames on it. I was going to do all kinds of pinstriping, and I just like it plain. Um, again, it's probably not the best for video, um, but I like it. So I hope you guys enjoy it as well. I um, hope you guys liked a little bit of trying to throw some history in about the leading and all that stuff. So once again, thank you very much, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.